So guys, welcome back to the channel. And this is gonna be a fairly quick video. Right here, I have the blue smartphone, the Studio Mini. Now, apparently this phone came out in 2023. I know some of y'all are looking at it, the camera, things like that, and you're like, what is this? Yes, this did come out in 2023. And it's actually one of the free phones for some of these services that you sign up for. Now, granted, I don't qualify for that personally, but I happen to know someone that did. And I said, hey, do you mind if I take a look at your phone? They didn't care, they just got it, just to have an extra phone lying around. So, you know, here we are. But some of the specs are 5.5 inch screen. It says vivid, but it's, you'll see it in a second. Uh, MediaTek Helio A22, so it's an extremely low end processor. Quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor, nothing to really, you know, just low end specifications. 32 gigs internally, which really probably translate to between 20 something gigs internally because a certain amount is necessary to run the software. We have two gigs of RAM, five megapixel, Main camera with LED, VGA selfie cam. I've never seen VGA in, in, in oh, wow, a decade. I'm stuttering. 2500 image battery, SD card up to 256 gigabytes, and Android 12 is powered by it. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy and actually see is it worth using in 2024, though? So I already had the pleasure of using this device for a little bit. And right here, as you can see, this is a device. The only thing that really comes inside the box is the charger itself. I think it's the full thing, I'm not too sure. I believe it was a full cable and power block. But outside of that, you do have to put your own battery in and you do have to put the SIM card in, which I wanna show you guys in a second. But first, let's just take a look at this itself. So right here, it's a pretty thick phone. A little chunky. You do have the one, let's say one megapixel, the five megapixel camera on the back with the flash. Blue to me at one point was a company that had the potential to be really good, but instead they kind of fell to the wayside. So I'm guessing that they probably have some type of government contract where they're just making low end phones for people that need some type of service. Now, you may ask, what's the purpose of having a phone like this? There are people out there that just don't can't afford a cell phone bill, even if it's $30, $40 a month. I'm not here to judge anyone's lack of a job or lack of finances. I'm just here to say that a lot of times you just can't afford what you can't afford. So this might get someone to where they need to be until they're able to buy basically a decent device. So you have your volume rockers right here. You have the power button all on the left hand side. If you look at the bottom, this is actually and yes, this is micro SD micro SD, <laughs> micro USB. To be honest with you, I, I did not expect to see a phone in 2023 using this. I can't even imagine why they would do that. But then again, this is probably an older phone that was re-released with updated software. Cause you know, it comes with two gigs of RAM. What, what phone in this day and age comes with two gigs of RAM? My smartwatch right here has like 1.5 or two gigs of RAM on it. So it really wouldn't make sense for a phone to have it. They wouldn't make new phones this low spec. Nine times out of 10, it's just a remodel of an older device that they decided to re-release. I could be wrong about that. But as you see, here's a screen right here. Um, you know, it, it may not look bad to you guys because it's a camera looking at a screen, but it is very, very, very washed out, just so you know. And even if we pull this down, you, you see the lag right here, um, it's very washed out. It is in dark mode. And if you look at the settings, you can just tell that this is just old technology. Like again, when I look at things like this, oh, how many gigs do we have? 22.61 gigs available, minus any updates. Also minus the two songs I have on here, which is about seven, eight megabytes. Outside of that, you do get a decent amount of storage out of 32 gigs, but this, the industry standard is really 128 at this point. If you have anything below that, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you have an older phone, but most devices outside of an iPhone 12 and, um, you know, uh, iPhone 12 shipped 64 gig normally like that was their standard so for anyone still getting iphones the 11 and 12 you'll probably have that low storage amount but the average now is 128 gigs but again this isn't horrible for a person that does not have a phone at all if you're someone that just like i said needs some type of assistance or help you got to take what you got to take and you know anything could definitely be a come up but outside of that you know it's not much to really say about this device now it does have a headphone jack at the top for people up there that like playing music you do have the option of Bluetooth that's still here. I wanna pull this off so you guys can see it. So if you look in the back, there's a little groove right here. It might be hard to find it initially because you don't see anything. It's on the side. If you pull that groove back, this is how you take the back off of the phone. 
And uh, inside of this, it will come with a SIM card. I don't know if the SIM card's in the phone. I think it's not. But either way, <laughs> yeah, I know you haven't seen one of these in a long time. Physical battery. Just pop this in the back as is. The SIM card goes into this slot so you actually fit it in here. And if you look at the symbol right here, you could tell that this is the way the SIM card is going to fit with that little corner right here. That's how it's cut. You do have an option of a micro SD card too, which again, you know, uh, you only can do so much. It's more so for storing information. Pictures, yeah, you can take them. They're not horrible. Let me give you an example. Uh, actually, the, the phone's powered off right now, but <laughs> I'm going to try to find a picture that I actually took that was pretty clear during the day because, again, it is only a 5 megapixel camera. But let's go over to the next section. How do the video recorders look? And let me tell you something. Hold your breath. So this right here is a video recorder, obviously. <laughs> you can see it for yourself. I'm actually looking out at 8th and Market. That's where the old Burger King used to be across the street over there, that little RNG brown looking building. This parking lot is normally more full during the day. Anyhow, the point of this video is to show you the quality of the camera. And I gotta be honest with you. Obviously, this isn't any high-end specifications or anything like that. But for the person that has a free phone, I don't think it's horrible to be a free phone. You know what I mean? Back in the day, free phones used to be those little candy bars with the buttons on the front. But now, smartphones is this. Again, it's not the sharpest. And I do have it on fine quality. All they have, I think it's like sharp and fine. That's it. You can't change the megapixel amount in the settings or anything like that. It's just not that advanced. But at least it's something. Yep, something to hold you guys over. The front camera, on the other hand, is horrendous, as you can see. The frame rate, not feeling it. You can barely even tell. I don't even have goatee here right here. It looks like it's part of my shirt. So I lift my neck up and you can finally see it. That's how bad the camera is on the front. <laughs> Either way, free phone. Can't really complain. If you can't afford a normal phone, then this is going to have to do for the meantime. Now I have two pictures to show you guys. This one is going to be the front selfie cam that I actually took. It's, as you can see, it's very, very grainy. Now granted, this, like I said, this is a picture, a video recording a phone, so the quality isn't the best. But I am using a higher end, not a higher end, the, the Galaxy S23 FE is high end enough, put it that way. You, your camera isn't gonna suffer, especially if you're doing recordings. This is very, very cloudy. I'm looking like a PlayStation 2 character or, or with, with the, you can't even tell that my facial hair or anything. Like at one point, <laughs> like I showed you guys in the last video, you couldn't even tell that I had a goatee. It looked like it was just attached to the sweater that I was wearing, right? And if you switch over here, look at the dramatic difference. Now, this is the back camera. This is the main camera. I don't think that this is a horrible picture. I actually think that if you look at this and the quality of it, it's actually not bad. It came out pretty sharp for the most part. That's our cat, Kirby. We were going through a time where uh, the cage in the back is actually for a cat. She was going through some health issues, so we had to give her some uh, stone medication and other things for her. It was it was a lot. She had a UTI or whatever it is for cats. It was a lot to deal with and she was urinating everywhere. So that's where that cage is in the background. But anywho, back to the, the review. I don't think, like I said before, the camera's not that good. Now, even if I was to just go here, right, and go to the camera, let me just put this in front so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me flip this around and take a picture of this, watch. All right, this is how the picture looks. It's not a horrible photo, but it is only five megapixels. So it's gonna be mediocre at best. But if you're a person out there that's taking photos, you have to send information to the state, you're, you're applying for welfare, housing, jobs, things like that, you're still gonna be able to go on Indeed. You're still gonna be able to go into your social medias. It's gonna be extremely slow, absolutely, but you still can do it. And again, like I said before, beggars can't be, uh, you can't choose. If you're in the less fortunate, because these are this, these phones are technically for the less fortunate, because you have to have some type of welfare or something in order to be able to qualify for that. Unfortunately, less fortunate less fortunate is spread over to the middle class. But this isn't a political video. I'll leave that for my other channel. Uh, it's not the worst phone in the world. There are people out there that have no phone. There are people out there at one point in time in life there were beepers and chirp phones and things like that, was which was substantially worse that it had practically no internet access of regular websites. Remember back in the day where websites couldn't load? This one doesn't have that problem. Like if I go to Google Chrome and I press accept, uh, no, I'm not gonna sync it. My wife's uh, email is in here. Let's see, see how fast it goes. 
Google. Come on. Google. Yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, it works. It does its job. It's good enough. But anywho, I'm going to close off this video. Is this phone actually worth it when signing up for free service? You want to know what's funny? I feel like I framed that question incorrectly because it's a free, you don't really have a choice of the phone that you're getting. Now, I do want to say this. They do have some options for some companies out there that have much better smartphones, especially for uh, free devices. I've seen people give out phones that not worked as fast as iPhones, obviously, but had more RAM, like four gigs of RAM. It might've had a 12 megapixel camera. Some free devices are just better than these. Again, I don't know even, I don't even know what company this is under, if we're being completely honest here. I think it uses, I'm not sure if it's insurance wireless or something like that. I know it uses the T-Mobile network, so I'm not sure which one it is. But the point is, is that if you're a person that can't afford a cell phone, yeah, sign up for free service. You may feel like, oh, it's beneath me. And if you feel that way, then it's probably why you're in a position that you're in in the first place. But if you need the assistance, just go get the assistance and get the phone. Don't expect to get the best thing in the world. Don't expect the best camera. Don't expect the most memory. You're not playing Call of Duty on this. The most you're playing is Temple Run. And that's the end of that because this phone can't handle anything at all. And, and I've tried many applications that to me weren't that graphic intensive. For example, I use Canva. It didn't really load well. I tried you cut. Let me, let me just say that converting a video on this is practically impossible. You, you'll be sitting there for quite some time trying to convert a smaller video with this processor. It just can't handle those things. It is not meant for that. It's just a deli day to day phone to get you to point A to point B. You have minutes. I'm not even sure if they're unlimited, to be honest with you, like text messages and things like that. But it is what it is. And I just kind of wanted to show you guys and have a good laugh at this. You know, I don't want to laugh too much because some people do have this phone and I'm not laughing at your situation. It's just, you know, I mean, I mean, come on, guys. The way they talk about these phones on these stands when they give them out for free, it's like, yeah, you can get a free phone. You can get a tablet. And it's like, bro, these tablets and phones are from 2010. Y'all just <laughs> put updated software on there. It's still the same old phone, but it is what it is. Anyway, like and subscribe like always, guys. And I will see y'all in the next video.